the smoke fire is heating up and it took me about 30 minutes to clean it so that's the last time I'm gonna try to cook uh, for 12 hours with uh, no wrap letting all the grease drip it was quite a mess in it but got everything cleaned up no major problems just a lot of work so the lesson I learned is that from now on when I cook on it uh, I'm not gonna create a, a mess by not wrapping we're gonna do the normal wrap also, I saw uh, on the uh, Weber site, uh, they put out a video where they put a tray underneath, so kind of like a drip pan. I'm going to try to cook this brisket using a drip pan because I don't want to go through what I did again. Uh, I did it once for you, that's great, but uh, it's just too much work, TMW. You can get the same result, I presume, because the cooking chamber has good convection. We'll let the uh, fat drip onto a tray, and I think that will be save a lot of cleanup because uh, I'm not a fan of cleanup, so, but I did it for you guys because I love you. This is a uh, going to be a fun episode because uh, one of my YouTube viewers uh, kind of told me that since I like Franklin's restaurant, Aaron's my buddy of mine, we were on a competition circuit uh, called, you know, many years ago while he was and I were both competitors. Now he's world famous and I'm still making YouTube videos. So here you go. Uh, Aaron uh, is famous for using a particular brand of meat. Uh, that's a Black Angus, a very high-end Black Angus. One of my viewers uh, in Texas, John Smith, told me that he found out that, uh, or he confirmed what I suspected that uh, Aaron's using Creekstone meat. So for those of you who are not aware, Creekstone is the company in America that produces really high-end Black Angus beef. I was able to order this from Creekstone. This uh, was shipped to me. It's an Angus Prime, so it's a Black Angus genetic prime and uh, they only have about like one out of 100 cattle that are certified Angus and this is a certified Angus Prime. I'm going to cook it uh, to pay homage to Aaron and uh, I love his restaurant. I consider him to produce one of the best restaurant style barbecue in America. I've eaten all over America including Car Lodge, Pinkerton, but I've uh, been amazed by Aaron for the past, uh, I don't know, 10 years I've eaten his restaurant off and on. Uh, he puts out 100 briskets a night flawlessly. So every time I've been back there, Every single order of brisket I've ordered from his restaurant is absolutely first class. So uh, I don't think I, I, no one can hold a candle to him in terms of his consistency, pumping out so much food every single day to absolute restaurant quality perfection on the brisket. I've eaten at many, many good restaurants, don't get me wrong, across America, across Texas. A lot of places put out good brisket, but uh, they are sometimes not as consistent as Aaron. They all put out really good brisket when they are on. And you know, sometimes even the best restaurants I've had, uh, like in the Dallas that I've eaten, and you can see a lot of my restaurant reviews in the links below, they were not uh, kind of the top notch. But every time I've eaten at Aaron's place, it's always top notch. So to pay homage to Aaron, I'm gonna cook this brisket, his style, which is kind of a Texas style, salt and pepper using the same exact brisket that you would get into his restaurant. So this episode is gonna be called the Texas Brisket Aaron Franklin Style using the same recipes as Aaron, you but cook on a smoke fire to try to replicate that wonderful Black Angus flavor you have in this restaurant, cooking with some Creekstone Farm Prime Angus briskets. This costs about $140 for about 18 pounds, so I don't know, it works out to be $18 a pound or something. So this is a really expensive brisket, but I've always wanted to pay homage to Aaron by cooking the same meat he cooks in his restaurants. Always smell your brisket, make sure that it's not gone bad. We're gonna trim this brisket restaurant style, which uh, is not as severe as a competition trim. We're just gonna leave as much meat as we can, get rid of some of the uh, fat here that uh, is just covering the silver skin and the fascia. Put your hand underneath the brisket so that you can kind of run your knife underneath the brisket, make a little bowl. Beautiful shape, symmetry. So when you're buying brisket in the store, as I taught, taught you in my previous videos, you're looking for four things, size, symmetry, striation, and marbling. Size is, uh, I like big, big briskets, I cannot lie. 
and uh, symmetry means that the brisket has a nice uh, shape on the um, pectoral ma major and pectoral minor which is the flat and the point flat muscle is called the uh, lean in texas so when you go to texas and you order brisket you go up to the meat counter and the guy asks you or the gal asks you hey what do you want you want fatty or lean the lean is the flat muscle and then the point the, the fatty is the point muscle so i'm going to trim off all the excess fat try to get off the silver skin of the fat share as best i can Kind of get down to the meat. So there are about uh, eight grades of beef in America. You have USDA Prime, Choice, and Select, and uh, there's five grades underneath it, like uh, Canada Cutter, Utility, Commercial, and so on that you probably don't see in the store, but they're used for uh, animal feed, making beef stock, and so on, or processed foods. So I'm trimming up all the fat here. As best I can. If you can get all of it off, don't worry about it. Not, not, not big, that big of a deal. Trim up all the fat from the eye here. That's enough. Flip it over. So I have quite a thick layer of fat here. I like to leave it about a quarter, quarter inch or half an inch of fat. Not a big deal because uh, we're going to trim some of this fat off. Let me show you guys how we slice it restaurant style or catering style after this. If you want to cook for your friends at home, this is the recipe that you kind of want to follow closely to this is a non-competition backyard or catering recipe cooking it and trimming it very much similar to what a person like Aaron or a Texas restaurant trim would look like and uh, when you run a restaurant you're interested more in yield you're not so interested in trying to win a competition now uh, I just want to point something out so you can see here discoloration here right so you got the red meat here and the this meat here so this is scalded meat this is nothing wrong with this when the carcass is uh, fabricated at the uh, produce uh, for the um, beef plant uh, this is washed with hot water so you get a little bit of scalding going on here you can trim it off if you want uh, no big deal uh, or you can uh, leave it on I'm just gonna trim it off this is normal so it's not like meat's gone bad you can see here, so this this is the scalded end, this is the non-scalded side. So you can see the two different colors. So this is normal, you get a lot of this in the meat. That means that this side of the carcass was washed with hot water. Okay, flip it over. Uh, this is a little bit thick here. Trim some of this off. A lot of you ask me about knives. Um, for trimming meat, uh, this is what I use. I use a uh, six inch boning knife. And I use uh, this thing called a rapid steel. It uh, makes the knife really sharp, so you can kind of make it razor sharp. Uh, if you are interested in getting these knives or this thing, you can look at my Amazon store link. I have all the many, many products that I like that seem, people seem to want to buy and use the same products I do in terms of all the rubs, gear, seasoning, sauces, and so on. So just trimming off the fat, leaving on about maybe half inch or less of fat on it, cooking it sort of a uh, Texas style. Uh, I'm, I'm trimming for yield, I'm not trimming for competition, so there's going to be quite a lot of uh, fat left on. And this is how I will prepare a restaurant or catering brisket or a backyard brisket for my uh, friends and family. So just carefully trim, leave about you know a half an inch of fat on it. So this is a very nice looking brisket, uh, the fat is very even. Let's see here, a little more fat here, trim this off. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm gonna do. Or well, trim for maximum yield. Let's go ahead and uh, make a Texas style rub. I'm gonna add uh, about half a cup of salt. So it's all right. Half a cup and uh, half a cup of black pepper, or maybe a little bit more. Uh, about sixty percent. Just a little bit more. And you guys know I like to add a little bit of celery seed. It's maybe one tablespoon. Just get a little bit of a extra oomph on the flavor. Just a touch of white pepper here. So to recap, we're going to use uh, kosher salt, coarse black pepper, and uh, some celery seed. So just four ingredients, right? White pepper, kosher salt, black pepper, and uh, uh, some celery seed. Just a little bit here. Mix it up. You can make uh, many kinds of uh, Texas style rub. You can do SPG, or you can just do salt and pepper, it's fine too. 
But I just like a little bit more flavor in my rub here. This is wonderful. You can make this up and store it in the kitchen. It's good on everything from hamburgers to scrambled eggs, even fried rice. This, this rub is pretty good. And you can add garlic if you like. Kind of keep it simple. All right, let's, uh, let's put a little schmear. Uh, you can put uh, some beef uh, concentrate. You can put Worcestershire. You can put uh, mustard. You can put a spray of water. It doesn't really matter. Let's gonna use some uh, concentrate. Uh, I like to find a way to let the rub stick. So I like to kind of wet the meat so that I'm not injecting. So the meat is dry. So I like to kind of get the meat wet just a little bit. So This one is found in a uh, restaurant supply store. Smiling Spine and Final has it in California. You go restaurant depot. And uh, you know, you, you don't have this, don't worry. Just use mustard, it's fine too. Don't worry about this. You know, it's not, not, uh, not that complicated. I'm gonna do both sides. Get a nice coating here. Okay, we're gonna apply some of the rub on the back part. Nice, thick layer rub. Heavier than you actually feel is reasonable. But that's the perfect amount. Flip it over. The other side. Okay, we're done. So, uh, for a uh, 18 pound brisket, you want to get about one whole cup of Texas style rub all over the both sides of the brisket. And ordinarily, I would let this sit, you know, for a while, for a few hours, uh, to get the let the salt kind of soak in. But I really don't have time. But so we'll just cook it on the smoke fire. We're at 275 degrees, and uh, we're gonna ready to put it in. I'm gonna run it at 275 for a while. We're gonna cook it drip pan because I don't really want to clean it again. That was a huge mess. Alright, pellets are running smoothly, let it drip, cook for it for about maybe 10 12 hours. We're two hours in the to cook and uh, seems to be running smoothly, 275. Pellets look good. Let's give it a spray now. Look at the drippings. Hey beans. Wanna heat up some dinner? Alright, let's go heat up some uh, dinner here. A little bit of pop ice going on here. So we warm it up. A little bit of pop eye action. A bit of smoke here. Join me for dinner, beans. There we go. All right, beans, the brisket dog, making a cameo as usual, waiting for his food. All right, so dinner is ready. Popeyes, all good. Let's get ready to wrap the brisket. Looks absolutely beautiful, nicely crusted. We'll put it about uh, three and a half lengths, like so. And roll it over, so a half length here, like that. Okay, we'll get this into the oven, 375. tender through a probe test with a bamboo skewer. For those of you who always ask me, why do we put it in the oven? Well, pellets are expensive, so I'm too cheap to cook it, cook it in a pit. Once you reach this stage, you only need uh, time, temperature, and moisture. So I'd rather cook it in the oven, save some fuel, but if you want to throw it back in your smoker and burn more expensive pellets, by all means, go ahead. Let's 
All right, folks, I'm going to be using a brand new knife uh, from the folks at Dell Strong. This is a uh, special, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, Damascus steel knife. Super beautiful. I'll leave the link in the description if you are interested in getting one. So super thanks to the nice folks M at Dell Strong for sending me one of their slicers. They watch my videos. They really like what I do. And they saw me using their Dell Strong 10 inch uh, chef knife. So. They said, Harry, that's the wrong knife to slice brisket. They sent me a nice, beautiful brisket slicing knife. This is the Dell Strong Shogun series. Beautiful knife, great feel, and super sharp. So let's go ahead and slice out our Franklin brisket. Let's slice from this side here. Take a slice from this side. Cuts beautifully. Super juicy. Show what we have here. That is a gorgeous brisket cooked on a smoke fire. Look at the smoke ring and look at how perfectly tender it is. Okay, it's got the accordion pull. Let me go pull it. Absolutely, absolutely perfectly tender. Here's the uh, the uh, burn end, so for the point. Here's the flat. This is equally good on this side here. Look at how beautiful that is. Absolutely gorgeous. The pull test. Absolutely super tender. You can see the bark here is super beautiful. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. I'm dripping over the table, the uh, all the juice and the oil, and then this beautiful smoke ring. Oh, you can you can see this here. Beautiful bark. It's nice here. Nice and burn ends. The fatty. Let's go get some shots of it before we start tasting. Take a bite from the uh, flat here. Flat tastes absolutely delicious. Uh, beautiful dark bark. Uh, very, very uh, moist, flavorful beef. A little bit of smokiness, a little bit of saltiness. And uh, you can see from the bark here, bark is beautiful right here. And uh, nicely crusted, uh, lots of flavor. One thing nice about a smoke fire is that despite smoking for 10 hours on the pit open, it uh, doesn't taste overly smoky. So it's got a nice, just a touch of smoke. As we say in barbecue, kissed by smoke. Flavor is very, very good. Uh, and uh, the meat has actually a very good texture. So let me try the point muscle now, which is this one here. See, it's beautiful. Uh, this is the point muscle and uh, it's nice and more, much more fatty. And the point is softer than the flat. Let me take a bite of this. Mmm, Greenstone Angus Black. Absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, really good eating brisket. It's a little bit expensive because it's, it's uh, kind of shipped to me mail order. But I completely understand why Aaron Franklin serves this in his uh, flagship restaurant in Austin, Texas called Franklin's. For those of you who saw my video, the Australian restaurant review, I really, really, really like the food at the restaurant. And uh, it's a good, pretty good rendition of what it tastes like in his restaurant. If you guys are able to get yourself a Creekstone Angus Black Prime brisket, you can cook it the same way I showed you in this video and uh, enjoy the trip to Austin without going to Austin. Uh, and uh, just a simple seasoning, just a good, Technique, um, have a good piece of equipment. You can use any equipment you like. I use a smoke fire in this particular cook. You can use a Weber Smoky Mountain. You can use anything you like on an offset smoker. You can use a Kamado. You can use a web, web, uh, a uh, kind of a, like a, a kettle even to do this. And uh, just fantastic food. Uh, I always told you guys, it's always about the pit master, not the meat, not the pit. Always about the pit master. And you can see that sound. That's the dog jumping on me. So I wanna make sure that he gets his food. We'll cut next to uh, letting beans try the food. So uh, I'm gonna end the, the video here. So uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks for coming to my channel and uh, thanks to my subscriber for recommending that I try to cook a uh, Creekstone Angus Black Brisket, the same meat used by Aaron Franklin at his signature restaurant in Austin, Texas. All right, it's a bit, bit beans time. Ready for your food, Mr. Beans? Okay, take a seat, please sit. sit. Are you ready, Beans? Do you know what brisket this is? This is the famous Creekstone Farms, Angus Black Prime, right? Similarly to, similar to Franklin's restaurant, my buddy Aaron. So go ahead, go ahead, go. Okay, he's reaching for the flat, looking at the smoke ring, tasting the flat, tasting the point, gobbling down the point. See, he knows the good stuff. He tasted the flat and the point, he ate the point first. So he's just like me. I just like the uh, pork fatty muscle from the brisket. And he took the uh, bite of the point before taking the bite of the flat or the lean.
Say hi to all your fans on my YouTube channel here. They always look forward to you tasting the food here. He's saying, don't bother me, Harry. I am busy looking for more scraps. All right. Okay. Good, good boy. Good boy. Good job, Beans.